Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology as we continue with the aircraft showcases. Today, it looks like we'll be going through more flanker variants. So, starting with the Su-33 Flanker D. Title, Sukhoi Su-33. NATO reporting name, Flanker D. Type, single-seat ship-based air defense fighter. Program, Development began in 1976 based on the production SU-27, but embodying folding wings, other features for shipboard operation, and movable foreplanes. Navalized SU-27 model or unit number T-1025 with the roster hook flew 1984. First SU-27K, K being Russian for Korobilny or ship-based prototype T-10K1. Flew 17th of August 1987. Second prototype, T-10K2, made first conventional non beastal landing by Soviet aircraft on ship. The Admiral of the Fleet Kuznetsov, then Tbilisi, as the Russians like to rename their ships like every three years. First of November 1989. Production at Komsomolesk on Amur began 1990. First Production SU 33, T 10K3, flew in 1990. Deliveries began in 1991, and initial operational capability was achieved in 1992. 20 were delivered and shore based on Kolo Peninsula mid 1994. Design features airframe generally similar to SU 35, but with folding wings, a raster hook, and other features for carrier board operations. Strengthened landing gear with twin nose wheels, long tail cone of land based version shortened to prevent tail scrapes during takeoff and landing on ship. Infrared search and track with wider angle of view, structure generally as SC-27, but hydraulically folding outer wings through 135 degrees and upward folding horizontal tail surfaces. Riveted and welded structure of aluminum and titanium alloys and steel. Landing gear generally as SC-27, but main wheel tires size 1030 by 350 millimeters Wind nose wheel tires size 620 by 180 millimeters. Nose wheel steerable through plus or minus 60 degrees. Arrestor hook under tail cone. Power plant as SC27, but with retract retractable flight refueling probe beneath windscreen on port side. Provision for centerline buddy refueling pack. Accommodation is SC27. Avionics includes nav systems specialized for use overseas. Armament basically is SU-27 plus ability to carry KH-31 or AS-17 Krypton air-to-surface missiles underwing and 4,500 kilograms or 9,920 pounds uh, KH-41 or 3M-80 Mosquito, which is Russian for mosquito, Indy ship missile on centerline. Dimensions external, wingspan 14.7 meters or 48 feet, 2 and 3 quarter inches, length overall including nose probe. 21.185 meters or 69 feet 6 inches with wings folded 7.4 meters or 24 feet 3 and a half inches height overall 5.9 meters or 19 feet 4 and a quarter inches tailplane span 9.9 .9 meters or 32 feet 6 inches weights and loadings not available performance never exceeds speed at 11,000 meters or 36,000 feet Lock 2.165 or 1,240 knots or 2,300 kilometers or 1,430 miles per hour. Minimum flying speed 130 knots or 240 kilometers per hour or 150 miles per hour. Takeoff run on carrier with 14 degree ramp 120 meters or 395 feet. Range with max internal fuel 1,620 nautical miles or 3,000 kilometers or 1,865 miles. G limit plus 8. Length 21.18 meters, height 5.9 meters, wingspan 14.7 meters, max range 1,620 nautical miles, takeoff run 120 meters. And here we can see the uh, the view of the flanker here, the flanker D specifically. And yeah, it's pretty much the same, I believe, as the previous model. Uh, you can see the big thing is it looks like the geometry of the vents might have changed a little, but that could also just be the tail plate or the four planes playing tricks on my eye. You see the fuselage has been beefed up a bit to probably to withstand the strain of carrier landings. And we'll see, it looks like, yep, well, uh, I don't think they shortened the this rear probe 
because they mentioned that they shortened it to prevent tail strikes on carrier landings, but it looks like it looks like they narrowed it in game, but they didn't shorten it and they did recolor it. But that's the main visual differences in the game and the fact that there even are visual differences in a game this old is kind of impressive, I still think. At least beyond the, you know, adding the four planes. Because that's easy, but doing the other stuff when they could have reused the same model is, uh, I think it's pretty impressive. I think they still have, uh, yeah, so they have these little things too. And, uh, this is basically being phased out. China, as I discussed in the video going over uh, the Flanker D, China reverse engineered an example that Ukraine had in order to make their, I believe the J-15 Flying Shark, might be J-16, or the J-16 might be the EW variant, I forget. Either way, <laughs> they made a their own version of this, and that's really the only version I think that's going to be flying for the foreseeable future. The Indian Navy chose to make 29K, or make 35K, one or the other, over the, um, not sure which one it's based on, but they chose that over the Sukhoi 33 just because of the age of, uh, of the aircraft and the fact they'd have to redesign it with updated avionics that they wanted it to stay competitive, particularly with China's SU-33 knockoffs, which are improved over the original SC-33. I believe they include ASA radars and such, so. Uh, and then Russia's own fleet is probably going to be retired soon just because, again, they've been aged. They haven't really been upgraded that much because of the collapse of the Soviet Union. And again, the MiG-29 K or MiG-35 K is going to be newer and smaller, so they'll be able to pack a couple more of them into the same size ship and probably have similar, if not better, capabilities overall per fighter on top of that. So, so that's how that's going to end up. But uh, next time we'll be covering, and by next time I mean an hour from now when the other video goes public, uh, we'll be covering the SU-35, so stay tuned for that. Until next time, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time and stay safe out there and we'll see you then.